I am here with one of my all-time favorite fighters, UFC Bellator current bare knuckle FC boxer, Joey the Executioner of Beltran. Joey, it's fight week for you. How's life? Um, it's going all right. You know, just um, staying loose, uh, just dealing with the boredom and, and anxiety. Not anxiety, just real um, excitement to go out and have fun, you know? For sure. Well, you were always uh, an exciting fighter, 100%. So, Bare Knuckle FC 2 this Saturday, heavyweight semifinal bout against Arnold Adams. That's another tough opponent for you, live on pay-per-view. How do you kind of plan on attacking this fight? Is there anything within his striking that you, uh, you, know, you feel like you can exploit? I mean, honestly, he's, uh, he's big, he's strong, he's athletic, but so is everybody else that I've fought. Uh, I'm just more focused on coming out, setting my pace, getting into my rhythm where I'm comfortable. Uh, and just like I said, you know, just having fun. I mean, when I'm smiling and out there and blood's flying uh, and I'm in my happy place, there's really nobody on, on this planet that can touch me. Um, you know, it, that doesn't always work out that way. But I, every time that I've ever been able to get into that 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 flow state of having fun and, and, and I'm ex and genuinely enjoying myself, I've always uh, been able to find success. Absolutely. I, now I cannot imagine that getting punched in the face is is fun, but if, you know, pretty much if you're happy about it, if you're not so anxious, not so nervous, I would feel like it's a, you know, a lot more fun for you, I would think. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're not going out there to play cards or, or checkers. We're definitely going out, I'm going out there to get in a fight, so I'm definitely okay with getting punched. <laughs> I do have to touch on your last fight uh, versus Tony Lopez. That was, as I'm sure you're aware, one of the probably most exciting fights, at least for me, that I've seen in a long while. I really don't understand or know how you guys were the alternate bouts uh, in that tournament because that fight was just incredible. You know, I don't know either. That's a question you could pose to the promoter, but I mean, it ended up, it ended up working out. Uh, from what I understand, I didn't know until afterwards, but it's kind of cool. It just adds to the story that there was like a full tryout process and, and a heavyweight tryout where like 60 guys showed up just to try out for the tournament. So after hearing that, you know, it definitely made sense as to why, because the whole fight and everything didn't really didn't really come together until like a couple, literally a couple of weeks before the show. Um, you know, so up until then, I, I was just training uh, to do an MMA fight. I was planning on just doing a couple of uh, regional shows, getting some wins back, get some rhythm back, and, and get back get back in a big show. Um, so when the bare knuckle fighting thing came came into play, uh, you know, it was kind of cool. It all ended up working out well. Yeah. So bare knuckle boxing is definitely not a new thing. You know, underground boxing, not you know, it being not sanctioned. Uh, but as far as it being sanctioned, now it's, it's rising in popularity so so quickly. Was bare, I mean, obviously you're a great boxer, but was bare knuckle boxing ever something that you kind of put any thought into? Um. Yeah, I, obviously, I, you know, actually, after I was uh, released by Bellator, like over a year ago, and then um, I went out and I fought Sergei Karatana, um, that was back in February of this year, I was actually, like, messaging back and forth with, with the guys from, from BKB out, out in the UK, and... Uh, you know, it just turned out not not working out for whatever. I can't remember exactly what. He got. I think my, my manager at the time hit him up for a little too much money, I guess, and they got spooked. But whatever, you know, I know what I'm worth. Anyways, they, uh, and so that didn't happen. So when this came about and it was a, a nice $50,000 tournament, I was like, oh, okay, I'll go do that. That sounds fun. Well, I'm definitely glad that you're uh, you're doing that. So, mixed martial arts, <laughs> you've had a lot of fights, you know, top top level competition for years and years since I began uh, watching. Well, I mean, kind of what does training look like, you know, in comparison with bare knuckle boxing? Which which sport do you find kind of more difficult to train for? Because mixed martial arts obviously encompasses all those different types of martial arts, but I, I'd imagine that BKB has a whole different type of training. Well, you know, honestly, it it was. Um... Once I got, once my body got used to it, it was actually, <clears throat> I don't want to say it was easier, but it was just different. It was different. I'll say that. It was different. Whereas MMA, you, if you do a real heavy striking day and your shoulders and your arms, your biceps are, are, are worn out from throwing thousands of punches, 
it's all right because the next day you're going to do like some grappling or some wrestling or maybe you go to strength conditioning or whatever, or whatever the case may be the next day. So your body kind of has a flow to it. It's all difficult and it all sucks, especially, you know, uh, wrestling for me. Everybody hates wrestling unless you're a wrestler, which which I wrestled in high school, but I was a heavyweight wrestler. It's not like I was shooting doubles and shit. Um, you know, so wrestling and grappling days can definitely be tough. Um, but you know, for the boxing, for the boxing training camp, it took some, took some time to get used to just punching every single day, every single day and just miles and miles of road work. That just fucking sucked, man. It sucked. It was really painful for a few weeks. And I just kept telling myself, I'm going to take it out on this motherfucker when I, when I get my hands on him. Because I'm, it's going to, it's, somebody's going to have to pay for this sucking so bad. So, I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm 100% excited for this fight. Yeah, once again, Aaron Adams is a uh, tough opponent. I'm not sure if he's going to be tougher than, uh, you know, what the fight Tony Lopez gave to you. Because that was a very back and forth fight. How quickly do you see this fight ending? I mean, I think he'll still be... He'll still be tough, he'll, he'll, but it'll be different. I definitely think that this fight uh, is going to end, like I said, fourth, third or fourth round. Um, you know, I just feel that... <clears throat> I look at it like this. Like, if Arnold Adams is as strong and as athletic and as fast and as powerful as he is, there's no denying that from, what, from his first performance and the few performances that I've found on the Internet. This guy's definitely fast, strong, and explosive. I feel that he's missing the missing element, and that's work ethic, that's heart and determination. When shit gets rough, when shit gets hard, when shit gets ugly and dirty, like, is he going to be willing to go through the fire? I don't think he is. You know? I don't think he... I think, I think that's like it's shown in the past. That's why this guy has never made it past regional shows. You know? For that, because for somebody to be that big, that strong, that athletic, to have all those natural gifts, and still be fighting on the nat- on the regional show level, you know, tell us something's missing. Something's missing. It's not in the physical part. It's in the mental part. It's in the spiritual part. And uh, you know, that's where I shine, baby. So I expect to finish them in the fourth round. I'm looking forward to it. So talking about your mentality, you are a very experienced fighter overall. Pretty much on the day of a competition for you, how do you get yourself in that right state of mind? Do you have any uh, rituals, uh, anything like that? You know, um, I don't really have anything set that I do, to be honest with you. I'm pretty loose and mellow. Uh, I, I actually like to just sit in a room all day and watch TV or watch videos on, on my phone and and just really try to not think about it until it's actual time to get in the car and go, get in the car and go to the arena. Um, if I do sense myself like feeling a little anxiety or wor- anxious or worried, then I'll just say a little prayer, do a little meditation. I have, uh, you know, a little protocol that I do in terms of that. But I mean, honestly, I've been doing it for so long. It's don't really get don't really get too nervous anymore. Now it's gonna say that I wasn't like that before, because for years and years I used to get freaked the fuck out, like freaked out in the locker room. It wasn't until like maybe like 2000, 2013, 2014 when I really started to like grasp the mental side of it and being okay with you know what I'm what I'm there to do. You know I accept that there's going to be violence. I accept that somebody's gonna to try to hurt me. You know it is what it is at that point. There's no getting out of it. So just relax and, and do what I've been training the last fucking three months to do. I did see on Twitter uh, <laughs> that you've been enjoying listening to, uh, to, to, to Foreigner. Is that something you uh, kind of listen to on the day of a uh, fight to get yourself uh, calm? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love that. I love that, man. I love that band. Yeah, for sure. No, I, I love like uh, all that classic rock music. You know, what's crazy is that my uncle, uh, I had an Uncle Mike. Uh, my who's, a, who's an older white dude now, but my my aunt, my aunt married a crazy white dude back in the days to wear tie dye shirts and everything. And I would go to his house, and crazy Uncle Mike would always put on like Black Sabbath and classic rock and Foreigner and stuff like that. And I remember being when I was young, I was like, I hate this shit. Like I just I like I thought like NWA was cool back when I was young. You know, NWA and like hip hop was cool. 
you know, the MTV generation. But as I got older and I got, uh, when that music was like reintroduced to me, I was like, oh, I recognize this. This is, I know this. I know this music. So I, lo- I have a definite, a big love for classic rock and all that good stuff. Yeah, so, so I'm in St. Louis. And uh, when I was working on my second book, I, I was interviewing as many musicians coming through St. Louis as possible. And Foreigner came to uh, the biggest amphitheater here in, in St. Louis in Missouri, the Hollywood Amphitheater. And I actually had a chance to interview uh, a couple of the members from Foreigner. And I mean, up before then, up until I was getting ready, researching for the interview, I had barely any idea who they were. My dad was just telling me how amazing they were, but I'm a pretty big fan of them now. Oh, dude, they're awesome, man. Like I said in my tweet, like it's crazy when you, like, you hear songs growing up and then you like, recognize who it is later on like holy shit these guys had seriously like 30 hits yeah yeah you know i actually have a perfect game plan so i'm obviously not a fighter as you can probably tell but if i were i'd, I'd crank up like, as my walkout the slowest 50s love songs my opponent would fall asleep and i'd automatically get the w isn't that brilliant <laughs> if in a, in a perfect world that would work that would work yeah yeah for sure so looking at this uh, overall heavyweight tournament the flip side of it, you, you have you have pretty tough opponents. You got Sam Schumacher, you have Maurice Jackson. Who do you think takes that win? I don't know, man. I'm excited. I'm excited to sit back and watch that one, or watch that one before I go out. I don't know the fight order, uh, but I'm definitely excited to see that. Just as a pure fan, you know, I'm I'm excited to be there and get get the opportunity to watch that fight live. You know, and and that's the cool part about about this promotion is that it's. You know, it, it's really stripped down to the to the the bare the bare necessities. You know what I mean? It is what it is. It's like in MMA, sometimes you get these two, these big matchups, and and sometimes it doesn't live up it doesn't live up to people's expectations because there's so many variables. That there's you, I don't want to come forward with punches because this guy will shoot in and take me down, or, or I gotta worry about getting kicked in the leg or whatever the case may be. It's like no, it's like this is. We're going to fucking punch each other in the face. That's the only way to win this fight. The only way for you to beat me is you're going to have to punch me in the face more times than I punch you in the face. And not only that, we're not going to have gloves on. So it's like, it's so exciting. And I know that like with the professionalism that's behind, you know, bare knuckle fighting championship, the sport really is, is poised to, to, you know, to rise up, to rise up to to a whole new level, man. It's it's exciting to, to be a part of. I think bare knuckle boxing right now is doing everything correctly. Uh, you know, they're getting these big names like yourself. Uh, they, they signed a big name, of a name I would have never thought would be fighting for them, Sean Merriman, uh, just recently. What do you think bare knuckle boxing has to do in order to, you know, get to that big level in combat sports, that UFC, that Bellator level? What do you think they have to do? You know, honestly, I just think just, just time, just, just uh, maintaining professionalism and integrity over time. Um, you know, to be honest with you, like something like, like signing like a Sean Merriman, you know, that, that is cool because he is a, a monster of an athlete. So matched with the right people that, you know, that makes sense, you know, but I mean, you can't in- insult the intelligence of MMA fans, combat sports fans. Like you put them in there with, tom- with a fucking tomato can that looks like the high school janitor, the local high school janitor. <laughs> People are going to be like, I'm not going to pay my money for this. But if you put them in there with, like, a, you know, somebody who has a, you know, an amateur boxing record or, or something like that, or just, like, a couple of amateur MMA fights, but it's still just, a, you know, at its heart, a brawler. And then those two guys get in there and brawl, and it's, like, a competitive fight. You know, that makes sense. Yeah. You know, I just think it's, you know, don't rush into it. Don't do something stupid, like... You know that, that'll that'll give the sport you know a black eye. You know, just fucking take your time, slow and steady wins the race. Yeah, absolutely. I was actually talking to Sam Schumacher the other day, and he expressed interest, uh, you know, good amount of interest in fighting Sean Merriman. But I think putting him in there against a guy like you, which I, which I've seen a lot of people have interest in, would be a huge mistake right now. Yeah, you know, I mean, it is what it is. Would I say no to it? Absolutely not. But I mean, that would not be good. It would not be good for Sean. Yeah. Definitely couldn't imagine that uh, being so. So, Joey, the floor is yours. I'm not going to take too much more of your time as it is fight week busy time for you. The floor is yours. Anyone you'd like to thank? I'd just like to thank uh, my coaches, my family, my sponsors, 
And give a shout out to my daughter, Amanda, who's taking off to college right now. She's going to uh, Santa Barbara City College, moving away from home, taking a big step today. So that's all.